Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm Mao, and welcome to the Game Design Perspective. With the recent Nintendo Direct, I think it's time we talk about what's going on with The Legend of Zelda, what does the Nintendo has in store for The Legend of Zelda in the future. And I think we all can agree that The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild changed the gaming industry. The industry would not be where it is today if it wasn't for that game. And when something like that happens, like you simply can't ignore that. It took another five years for Tears of the Kingdom to come out. And I'm counting like the DLC for Breath of the Wild, which was released like at by the end of 2017. So it's like over five years what it took for King Tears of the Kingdom to release. And I mean, The Legend of Zelda is not a stranger to iteration. It is common knowledge that Majora's Mask reused a lot of the source code and assets from The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. And the Skyward Sword did the same with Twilight Princess and Twilight Princess with Wind Waker. Hence why speedrunners can abuse of certain glitches shared throughout these entries, such as the Back in Time glitch, which if you don't know about it, I definitely suggest you go watch that for Skyward Sword and Twilight Princess. It's very interesting how that works. And Tears of the Kingdom took a bold direction by reusing almost everything from Breath of the Wild. And Nintendo knew a lot of people would call Tears of the Kingdom a DLC for Breath of the Wild, but they still went for it. And it's definitely not a DLC, like really. The systems, levels, and maps they added on top of Breath of the Wild are really robust and difficult to design and implement. And guess what? Tears of the Kingdom sold extremely well. It sold over 20 million copies and counting. I mean, it is not as much as Breath of the Wild with over 30 million copies sold, but it's still a success. Before this, before Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, the best selling The Legend of Zelda title was Twilight Princess, with over 8 million copies sold on its first release for Wii and Game you, not counting the HD release. Breath of the Wild has sold by now over four times what Twilight Princess sold. Now, 8 million copies is not a low number by any means. Remember, Capcom is celebrating Dragon's Dogma 2 with over 3 million copies sold. 8 million is huge! It's huge! But there are so many fans thanks to Breath of the Wild. And most of the older The Legend of Zelda fans still played Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. Now in our last The Legend of Zelda video, I said that The Legend of Zelda has now three main gameplay branches. The classic 2D games, which are A Link to the Past, Minish Cap, games like that. The classic 3D, which are Ocarina of Time, Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, Majora's Mask, you know that. And the opener games, which are now Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. So, what's going on with all of that? Nintendo CPD Production Group 3 is developing a new opener, The Legend of Zelda. I can almost guarantee that. I don't think they are iterating over the Hyrule they used and built for Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, but they are definitely making a new opener game. And you know it, when they show it's gonna blow our minds off. You know that. But they're not gonna let go of the opener formula. Not the main The Legend of Zelda team. Now in that video I stated that Greso could be developing a new classic 3D The Legend of Zelda due to their experience with Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask 3D for the 3DS. And I thought that would show us fans that the classic 3D games lived on. They were not abandoned. And I said in that video that I hope that Nintendo hands Zelda 2 to Inti Creates because they showed interest in remaking that game and they are masters at their craft. They're masters at crafting 2D games, 2D side scrollers like are their specialty. And I still say that Nintendo should allow them to remake it and truly enhance that game. And that Nintendo should also take this chance to re-release the game, rebrand it instead of Zelda 2, rebrand the game as The Legend of Zelda, The Adventure of Link, and get rid of that black sheep statue that it's been carrying for more than 30 years. Because Miyamoto even came out in an interview and, and said he wishes they could have done more for the game. That there was not a lot of experimentation with it. That it was just like planned on paper and implemented just as it was on the documents or on paper. Like they, they, the way they envisioned it is the way the game came out. It was not made in an organical way according to Miyamoto. Like Nintendo should give them the chance to remake Zelda 2, enhance it, get rid of the black ship, boom! But in the last half year Nintendo has flushed away everything that I 
thought could happen with the Legend of Zelda franchise. Like almost all of it. They revealed the movie to be live action. I thought it was going to be animated just as the rest of you guys probably. And it was completely unexpected to everyone. And I think this decision was made because they're targeting the Lord of the Rings fans and all of those similar fandoms out there. They want to get all of those fandoms into the series, right? Like having this classic live action fantasy movie, like that. those kind of movies are always a blockbuster. So I think they kind of want to get on, the, on, on top of that hype train and get all of those fans into the series. Now, I don't believe this will make the next main The Legend of Zelda game, like the old open air the Legend of Zelda game look realistic in any way. I still think it's gonna be cell shaded, not the same cell shader they used for Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, but I still believe they're gonna cell shade the game. Like, you know Nintendo doesn't work like that. They didn't with the Mario movie. They released Mario Wonder like six months after the Mario movie and it looked nothing similar. They didn't release a, a 3D platformer Mario game. And as a quick side note, Nintendo, I won't let you go with this. So, the only thing that was high on my dream list above being a game designer was being Link. Nintendo, it is your time. You can cast me as Link. I'm open. I'm free. I'll do it. I'll do it. Let's go. Let's go. I'll be your Link, guys. Contact me, guys. Please. <laughs> no, please. It's been my dream. It, like, it was like the, the highest dream I could ever have was being Link since I was a child. You guys help me get that. Like, comment on the section below. Tag Nintendo. Let's get Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get me as Link. Please, guys. But yeah, then they, they revealed Echoes of wisdom last week on the Nintendo Direct, which is extremely interesting. I was not expecting that. And as far as I know, and we can safely assume this, Nintendo, I mean, Nintendo hasn't commented on this, but it is pretty obvious that it's developed by Gresso after they remade Link's Awakening. They iterated over the Link's Awakening remake in a very similar way to what Tears of the Kingdom did over Breath of the Wild. Again, The Legend of Zelda has always iterated, technically, design-wise, and artistically. But I thought that if they iterated, it would be like, if Gresso was gonna iterate, over the Link's Awakening remake, it was gonna be another remake. I never expected anything like this. It's incredible. They did the most interesting thing that could have happened, and I never thought of. They showed a 2D The Legend of Zelda game that has a similar design philosophy that what Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom have, where exploration is not only on the level design, but in the mechanics too, where creativity is rewarded. Exploration is not necessarily the challenge, but they treat exploration as a puzzle and their reward at the same time. Exploration is not only the means to an end here. You don't explore necessarily to find something. And since exploration is a part of the puzzle, there's not a single solution to a puzzle. Guys, this is the new direction for The Legend of Zelda. They have stripped The Legend of Zelda down to its core. They have stripped the exploration verb in game design down to its core. And what does that mean? And that's what's innovating The Legend of Zelda so much. And they are justifying brilliantly by allowing us to play as Zelda, where she is a different character and as such fights and solves things in a different manner than Link does. She fights and solves things like royalty, where royalty doesn't necessarily do things themselves, but have something or someone do it for them. It's brilliant. And if this is successful, which most likely will be, will Zelda be playable in future 3D titles? Will Zelda be the star of 2D top-down classic Legend of Zelda from now on? Honestly, I think that by the reaction online, the new exploration philosophy of the series, all of us wanting to play as Zelda herself for such a long time in a mainline title. It being released on a Nintendo Switch, which is about to become the best-selling console ever, surpassing the PS2. I think Echoes of Wisdom is going to sell more than Twilight Princess did on its original release. I wouldn't be shocked if it reaches the 10 million mark. The Link's Awakening remake sold over 6 million copies. And that was when the Switch had a smaller install base. And the revenue Echoes of Wisdom will make, it's gonna be 
huge guys. It is cheaper than open air games. Greso has, as of April from this year, 2024, 91 employees, according to their website. I mean, we don't know if all of them were involved in the production of Echoes of Wisdom, but even if they were, I'm pretty sure EPD Group 3, which are which are developing and develop the open air games, Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, are much larger than just 91 employees. You can pinpoint everything, like Echoes of Wisdom is going to have a huge revenue. It's incredible what they're gonna do and if it just sells over links over what Link's Awakening Remake did it's gonna be it's still gonna be a huge success but yeah by this point we have talked about what Nintendo wanted to tell us from that Nintendo Direct about what they want us to know about the Legend of Zelda franchise but what can we get out of what they are not telling us about the Legend of Zelda franchise. Where are the Legend of Zelda, Twilight Princess, and Wind Waker HD? Where are those ports that all of us have been waiting for since 2017? I mean, I don't remember the first rumor for those games were 2017 or 2018, but where are they? Where are those games? They're the only 3D The Legend of Zelda titles missing on the Nintendo Switch. Every time we think they're gonna show up on a Nintendo Direct, they're always a no-show. Every time we see there's nothing announced or revealed for The Legend of Zelda, every time we don't know about the production of any other The Legend of Zelda title, we bring those games up. Everyone wants them. And this was the perfect Nintendo Direct to show them. There was nothing The Legend of Zelda related that we knew of, it is probably the last pure Nintendo Switch Direct that we're gonna get before they release the Nintendo Switch successor. I mean, they still have time to squeeze one more Nintendo Direct by the end of this year, probably in September or something like that. But I don't think it's likely that they're gonna show up. Every time, they're less likely to show up on the Nintendo Switch. And it doesn't make any sense to release both games on the launch window for the Nintendo Switch successor. You don't launch a system with ports of games that are over 17 years old, unless they were remakes. Could happen, but I don't really think so. I don't think they're gonna remake them. You want to impress with your new console. You want to show them the new experience that everyone can get on your new console, on your next gen hardware. This doesn't mean they will drop the Nintendo Switch anytime soon, not with a user base that large. They can't. They could still be saving these ports for the transition period, but that means they would show those games and release them for the holidays on 2025. Hope you guys see where I'm going with this. They're not showing those games anytime soon. And what does Nintendo want to say about not releasing those games anytime soon? I think they're telling us that The Legend of Zelda is heading on a new direction, on a very successful direction, that they are not backpedaling on the decision they made with the opener games. A very successful decision, if I do say so myself. Like, the amount of copies sold is enough to tell us that it is a very successful decision. They are releasing all their games on the franchise on the Nintendo Switch Online, but it's not the same as porting to Wii U remasters. They're not charging the same either. They can't. Nintendo is telling us that open air is here to stay and rule over classic The Legend of Zelda games. Because the way I see it, Echoes of Wisdom is starting a new branch in the gameplay The Legend of Zelda branches that we talked about before. So that would leave us with four branches. Classic 2D games, open air 2D games, starting with Echoes of Wisdom, classic 3D games, and open air 3D games. And if my prediction for Echoes of Wisdom sales and revenue is actually true, why would Nintendo look back? Honestly, either we like it or not, it is the right business decision for them. And we know it's Echoes of Wisdom is going to be a fantastic game. It will be the game of the year for me. Don't hate me, guys. I love every The Legend of Zelda game as if they were my children. Come on, guys. Sorry for that. I'm happy with whatever comes from the franchise, honestly. But where does that leave the classic 2D branch? Outside of remakes and ports. Same with the 3D branch. If they release Wind Waker and Twilight Prince HD on the Switch, 
or their next console. Either it is the HD remasters or ports of those games for, for the Switch Online, there's not going to be classic 3D The Legend of Zelda anytime soon left for us. Those are the last games to port to the Nintendo Switch, the last 3D classic The Legend of Zelda. It would probably be the dead of that branch for a very long time, for the foreseeable future. Probably the rest of Eiji Onuma's career on, on Nintendo and The Legend of Zelda. Sadly, I want to meet Eiji Onuma one day. That's one of my dreams too. I believe they will have the HD remasters ported over. I don't think they're going to release them on Nintendo Switch Online. It's a little bit sketchy to do that, especially when you have like Pikmin 1 and 2 and Super Mario Sunshine and all of that ported to the Nintendo Switch and not being on the Switch Online service. If in all honesty, guys, if it were by me, I would have every The Legend of Zelda branch be alive and healthy and kicking and in a production state all the time. Well, my dream is to actually work on a The Legend of Zelda game one day, but I want to see every The Legend of Zelda branch be alive and kicking all the time and selling well and just have every single Zelda fan as me satisfied. But how reasonable is that? I don't know. I don't know. I want you guys to tell me in the comment section what do you think is going to happen? What do you think of this new direction for The Legend of Zelda? Are you excited for Echoes of Wisdom as I am? Please let, let me know in the comment section below. And if you want to see me play Link in The Legend of Zelda movie, help me. Help me. Please. It's my dream, guy. <laughs> no, seriously. Since I was a child, I wanted to do that. All right. Guys, thank you so much. I hope you liked the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next one. See you guys.